All right, everybody, welcome back to Maddie Moolah, the place where you come to find out about Moolah, I guess. So for those of you guys that I anticipate um, have been a part of the channel uh, in over the past, say, 18 months or so, you, I'm sure you've heard us talk about the YLDs, QLD, uh, XYLD, and, and stuff of the like. So today we're going to be talking about a new one that is out by looking at the title of the video. I'm sure you've already seen what it is. Uh, so with that being said, if this is not your first time on the channel and you've seen multiple videos at this point, uh, feel free to hit that subscribe button. We talk about everything. Um, as you can see, uh, based off the little small video that I'm showing here, um, my green screen behind me is broken. Um, actually, it's just nighttime and I was too lazy to get up and open up the blinds. But anyway, we are talking about RYLG. Uh, I'm a huge advocate for XYLG, which is the S&P ver 500 version of this. So what is this? This is an article written by Global X on Seeking Alpha. Uh, if you guys are interested in looking at Seeking Alpha Premium, there is a link in the description um, for you guys for potential premium uh, discounts there. But this is a Russell 2000 covered call ETF and growth ETF, if that makes sense. Uh, mess that up. Russell 2000 cover call and growth ETF versus RYLD, which is just a Russell 2000 covered call ETF. So this incorporates a little bit of growth. And as I mentioned, I'm more of a fan of XYLG than XYLD. And this article will go into a little bit more about why that is, um, why I like the YLGs versus the YLDs. Um, so uh, Seeking Alpha has this article hosted. Global X writes, on October 5th, we launched the Global X Russell 2000 cover call and growth ETF RYLG. It uses writing covered calls on half of its portfolio in an effort to achieve both income and growth. Now, you might see that I'm just like reading things out. I get it, but there's a lot of cool graphics in here as well that I wanted to share with you guys, which is why I'm making the video. RYLG may be suited for investors who are seeking both growth as well as income potential. RYLG may be better suited uh, for investors who are looking for both. Okay, so I just, cool, repeated that. So what uh, what they basically are looking for is people that are looking for income, but also the upside potential where RYLD uh, may cap some of that potential. So RYLG is the third fund in the covered call and growth suite, where they also have QYLG, which is the NASDAQ 100, as well as XYLG, which is the S&P 500 covered call and growth ETF. I'm a big fan of XYLG. So this brings Global X to 15 funds in total. So with that being said, um, they're talking about interest rates here at ultra low levels for the past decade. Income investors have struggled to find diversified sources of income for their portfolios, blah, blah, blah. It's hard for these investors to generate real inflation adjusted income to come by inflation environment. Investors have increasingly sought alternatives such as options like covered calls to offer income potential and long-term growth opportunities. So the Global X team buys the securities in the Russell 2000 at the respective weights of that index. Each month they will write ETFs at the money index call options on the Russell 2000 in an attempt to generate income. The options written cover 50% of the value of the stock position held in the fund. This means that the fund retains roughly half of the upside in, uh, potential. So they're writing out the money to be able to generate that cover call income. And it'll explain a little bit about, do you get distributed all that income? And the answer is no. It explains. It's actually pretty cool because it explains not just what happens with RYLG, but also XYLG, QYLG, and also the YLD funds as well. So it employs this cover call strategy in effort to achieve both income and growth. The fund is passively managed. It follows a rules-based approach, uses European style options, which cannot be exercised until expiration and are all cash settled. Um, they use the Black Shoals options pricing model where they can see potential premiums on a strategy like this looking and using 50% cover call Russell 2000 strategy going back to the last 16 years, which includes periods like the financial crisis. In addition, they can see the model premiums relative to the Russell 2000 applied volatility index which is expected it closely tracks. So this would be um, the Russell 2000 at the money cover call premiums, which are half covered being in the orange on the left. 
you can kind of see what the premiums would kind of look like um, on, a, on a monthly say, basis here. And then you can look at the Russell 2000 implied volatility and you can see that it tracks roughly with that, right? Um, on a pretty good ratio, right? But of course, this, in, this is a lot uh, different of a scale, right? So pretty cool to see though. So for context, GlobalX runs two other cover call and growth strategies similar to RYLG, which I had mentioned earlier, QYLG as well as XYLG. Below you can see the premiums history since those have come live. So you, um, what they have on these, and you can see a monthly distribution cap of about 0.5% per month for both QYLG and XYLG. But you can see since they're writing pretty decent um, at the money opportunities, they most of the time generate more than on the left hand side than the half a percent that they put into the fund or distribute from the fund rather. But you can also see that uh, at the end of the year, um, they distribute um, any leftovers as capital gains, uh, which get distributed to you. So just like what we saw um, in XYLD and QYLD, I didn't have QLD, but XYLD, I saw a large, um, huge dividend at the end of the year um, and paid in January. So as a general guideline, they pay these funds capped at one of multiple things. Half the premiums received or half a percent of net asset value. The excess amount of the options received, if applicable, applicable is reinvested in the fund. Year-end distributions can exceed the guideline due to capital gains that are paid out at the end of the year. However, that being said, if you're looking at RYLD, which employs 100% at the money covered call, so limits your entirety of your upside, but generates a higher income strategy, that limits it to a 1% model, which is very similar to what they have for the NASDAQ 100 and S&P models as well, XYLD and QYLD. This may not be exactly what happens in practice. They expect the premiums received by RYLD to be approximately half of RYLD. Um, given that 50% versus 100% call writing of the portfolio. But this is what the these particular ETFs have paid out, the QYLD, XYLD, RYLD, with a 1% cap. Um, so keep in mind, they're limiting to uh, the options premium, um, either one or two. Half of the options premium up to, half, or up to a full percent, or um, basically... Uh, half a percent, I guess, in this case. So you can see um, QILD, for example, they're paying, you know, over, about half here. They're paying 1% the next uh, because they were able to generate over 2% uh, running at, at the money covered calls. So it just goes to show you what that could look like. For XYLD, um, they generated, looks like half a percent rather than a full percent. And it looks like maybe they transitioned to a full percent um, sometime in 2020 um, as they approached kind of 2021. And then they, they were able to, to kind of get to the place where they were paying out half of whatever options premium was provided. And then RYLD has had great success in getting options premium, sometimes getting five, six percent. But in that meantime, they are only distributing the one percent cap. Um, so pretty cool to see. And then here is the last 12 months or so. You can see almost 1% a month in QILD, XYLD, ranging anywhere between three quarters of a percent to 1% a month. And then RYLD being about 1% a month as well, except with the exception of the excess capital gains being distributed by QILD and RYLD. So half premiums received or 1% of the net asset value with the excess of the premiums received being reinvested in the fund and then year end distributions can exceed um, due to capital gains being paid up by the end of the year. So because RLG only uses cover call writing on half of its portfolio to achieve both income and growth, it's a similar strategy to QLG, XYLG to focus on a different index. So, um, Similarly, our cover call strategies are similar to our cover call strategies and they write cover calls in an effort to provide income. Primary difference is that they're only writing options on 50% of the stock holdings, 
whereas RYLD covers 100% at the money. RYLG may generate approximately 50% of RYLD. So the trade-off between the growth and income, investors must consider multiple factors in deciding the specifics of a cover call strategy. One primary topic is the amount of portfolio will be covered by the call options. An investor must choose whether to fully cover or only partially cover their underlying position if the underlying position experiences a 1% gain. If an investor is full covered, the full covered investor will not partake in the gains. If a 50% is covered, they will partake in 50% of the upside and gains. On the opposite side of this, if the underlying stock experiences a 1% decline, the full covered investor would take part in the decline, but it would be partly offset by the premiums that the options received. If an investor is 50% covered, they will participate in a greater proportion of the decline as 50% of the uncovered uh, of the covered investor only receives half the premium to offset losses. So there's a little table upside potential with the 50% coverage and say RYLG, you get half of that upside and the RYLD, for example, you get none. Whereas the options premium income, you get half, but you get full options premium income. In a fully covered portfolio, the investor has no upside participation if the options are fully written at the money. Fully covered por portfolios have written covered calls on 100% of the value. Um, however, because it is selling options at an underlying price, a fully covered strategy will typically generate income. In an undercovered portfolio, this means that the notional value of the written covered calls is less than that of the underlying portfolio. This allows the investor to participate in both some of the upside as well as some of the income. The trade-off for the participation compared to the fully covered strategy is lower income. Thus, RYLG may be suited for those who are looking for both income and growth. So uh, this goes a little bit into specifically how the market cap uh, percentages performs with respect to the Russell 2000. So the majority of it is coming into the small caps with a little bit going into the micro caps. Um, this is from as of September 30th of 2022. So higher rates reduce the present value of those distant cash flows, which is something that's faced by technology and growth companies. While both segments have been negatively impacted, the decrease in the price to earnings associated with growth has been more pronounced compared to small caps. So valuations have been more fo basically focused on near-term cash flows. The Russell 2000 has high exposure to small cap equities. Um, so then this talks a little bit about different strategies, whether or not you would like to implement a 50% cover call ETF in a portfolio um, or, or what have you. And it kind of just gives you a little bit of coverage about it. Um, but then it also talks a little bit about some of the other cover call funds and also buy right strategy fund as well. And uh, it's, a, it's a good read. I think Global X is onto something with these portfolio places, but what I would provide a little bit of context to some of you guys is I think some of you guys just anticipate that because you're invested in something like a cover call ETF that's underlyingly invested in something like the SP 500 is that it will automatically make money as much as the SP 500 plus you're going to get the cover call income so you're going to be getting double whammy right it's not the case and so I think that this graphic kind of shows you a little bit about what you can expect in the upside situation. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm just gonna take a quick minute to upload the video here and just hope you guys appreciate the context and not to say that one is better than the other. I think it's all dependent upon what you're looking for. If you're an older person uh, looking for dividend income, you really need to get that income up, then you know, the RYLD or XYLD might be the opportunity for you. Just notice that it might have a potential decay on principle over time. So keep that in mind. But if you are looking for, say, short-term income, you still have plenty of years to go and you're still wanting to make sure that you get uh, that income. Or if you're in the case of you don't need a 12% dividend yield, you can deal with a 4 to 5% dividend yield while still trying to accommodate for that potential growth. Um, you know, something like an XYLD or RYLD could be up your alley, right? But if you're somebody that has high net worth and doesn't necessarily need the income, that's when you would probably look at something like a SPY. So it all very much depends on where you are in your investing career, what you're looking for. Uh, don't get trapped in these high yield opportunities unless you truly need them. Be sure what you need is uh, what you're investing in or what you're investing in is what you need. 
Otherwise, you might end up disappointed. So thank you guys. Edit this video, upload it for you, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.